beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see that it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone, so everyone can have access to it. Also, by doing this, you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel. Then, don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section. Hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here. And then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too. You were blessed and stay blessed. So the quality of your Christian experience and your faith works depends on your experience with God. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Daniel chapter 11, a very popular scripture and verse 32, the B part, Daniel 11 and verse 32. It says, I'll read the whole scripture, and such as do wickedly against the covenant, it says, shall he corrupt by flatteries, but the people that do know their God, the Bible says two things will happen to them. Not that the people who are aware there is God, it takes more than an awareness as to the fact that there is God. It takes more than an awareness that he is alive, in fact. The Bible says the people that do know their God, they shall be strong. Capacity. Number two, they shall do exploits. Not talk about exploits not wish for exploits their lives will become a literal capture a manifestation of the hand of god may that be your testimony after tonight yes. that men and women will look at your life and say i used to know you but something has changed what changed and you will tell them that i came for this convention and i encountered the god of the bible hallelujah that means that my results and your results will be predicated upon our encounters, our experience with God. The second thing I want you to know very quickly is that in as much as God wants to give us encounters, God reveals himself dimensionally. Please write that down. God reveals himself dimensionally. I was blessed by the pastor who came to take the offering and he said that there are many dimensions to God. That is very true. So in learning God, in knowing God, it is a, you are exploring him one dimension connecting to another. God is multidimensional. He is so vast it will take eternity to learn all of him. But that in knowing God and in experiencing him, nobody no matter how yielded can see all of God in one moment. Number one, you will not even live after that encounter. Number two, even if you were given the opportunity, you will not understand what you saw. Hallelujah. So when he came to Moses, he said, I am that I am. Moses said, you are sending me to Pharaoh, but at my confidence will be predicated upon my encounter with you. Who shall I tell Pharaoh had sent me? And he said, I am that I am. That is a very mysterious name. Hallelujah. I am that I am. But all through scripture, you will see God named in various forms and in various fashions, pending on the type and the kind of revelation of himself he made known at that point. For instance, if they saw him as a mighty provider, they captured that name as Jaira. Are we together now? 
And if they saw him as a healing God, they would call him Rapha. If they saw him as their peace, they would call him Shalom. Seeking with their righteousness. Same God, but these are several dimensions. You see, when you invoke Jairah, you will not get healing. You will get provision. So God captures his possibilities within the frame of his names. So when Jesus came and was teaching us what we have come to know as the Lord's Prayer, he says, when you pray, pray in this manner. Our Father which art in heaven, the first demand is hallowed be your name. That means reverence all those dimensions. Hallowed be your name. In other words, we must approach the revelation of your person as captured in your name with reverence. Are we together? So God reveals himself dimensionally. The God of Abraham is the God of Isaac. He is the God of Jacob. But in terms of his mode of operation, the God of Abraham does not operate like the God of Isaac. The God of Isaac does not operate like the God of Jacob. Are we together? When you call upon the God of Abraham, he will reveal himself in a certain way. When you call upon the God of Isaac, he will reveal himself in a certain way. The God of Jacob, he will reveal himself in a certain way. Hallelujah. This is very powerful. God reveals himself dimensionally. And the meaning of that is that the dimension of God you encounter, if you're writing, write this down. The dimension of God you encounter will be the direction of your exploits. Let me take it again. The dimension of God you encounter will be the direction of your exploits. If you encounter a healing Jesus, what will emanate from your life is the healing anointing and a robust healing ministry. But surprisingly, you may be poor, you may be broke, even though you are operating in the healing dimension. Because that is the dimension of God that you captured. Are we together? It is possible that you can encounter the God of Abraham and you step into a point of influence and supplies and abundance. Your life becomes a portrait of the man that the Lord had blessed. And yet, there are many other aspects of your life that may not be speaking. Because you will need to encounter God as touching those dimensions. This is a very important point for us to appreciate as we explore the theme of this conference. Now you understand when you say the amazing God. Because you are talking about the same God but that there is a dimension of him now that you choose to study. And the way God operates is that... The dimension of him he wants you to experience he will put that burden in your heart so that you begin to learn and explore that dimension the Bible says it is God who is at work in us both to will and to do he puts the desire in your heart and he compels you to now begin to study and to begin to learn that dimension of him so God reveals himself dimensionally God reveals himself dimensionally. And you know the dimension of God you have encountered. Is it all right if I turn around once in a while? All right, so the God that you encounter, listen please. The God that you encounter determines the direction of your exploit. How do I know the dimension of God I have encountered? By the testimonies that answer in your life. There are people who will only testify in a certain area and not a certain area. That means you have seen God revealed in a certain area, but there is need to see him revealed in another dimension that may be deficient in your life. Hallelujah. Someone may have experienced the God who shows men mercy, but you may not have experienced the God who shows men favor. It is possible that you have experienced the God who can grant you the grace to pray. But you may not have experienced the God who comes as light. You may be prayerful but bankrupt of spiritual revelation. So it is important that we capture God holistically to live a balanced and a fruitful Christian life. Are we together? This is the reason why no matter how dexterous we are in understanding God, you must understand that all that you know is simply a dimension of him. John walked with the living Christ all through his earth walk for a period of about three and a half years. But in Revelation chapter 1, when he was banished to the Isle of Patmos, 
The Bible says he was there for the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. When he saw the same Lord Jesus, he could not identify him again. Because this time around, it was Christ glorified. A dimension of his glory that John did not see when Christ was at work in the earth. And he began to describe what he was seeing. The beauty and the radiance that came from his face. And all of those other descriptions. And although John was already caught up in heaven, there was a voice that said, come up hither. So even in heaven, there is still room to go higher. Higher than what you have seen. Higher than what you have known. Hallelujah. Are we following so far? Now, the Lord put it in my heart to share this. The Bible says, this is the Lord's doing. Please let me have your attention now. It immediately tells you there are things that men can do. There are things only Satan can do. There are things only God can do. Please pay attention. There are things that men can do. It is human to walk on my two feet. Am I right on that? This is not a miracle. You are watching me move around this stage. It is not a miracle. We give glory to God, but it's not a miracle. It was programmed as a possibility within the reach of men. I don't have to be born again to walk because this is a possibility within the frame of men. I can clap. I can speak. Animals, even lower animals can walk. These are possibilities that men can produce. There are other things that only Satan can do. If you see them happen in the life of a man, you know Satan has visited that man. Are we together? Now, we're getting into the depth of the teaching now. So, there are abilities that men have. The ability to speak. The ability to think. The ability to walk. The ability to relate. Even the ability to love from a natural standpoint. These are all abilities that were given by God to all men. It is not salvation that brings you into this possibility. Once you are human, it's an advantage that came with our design. Are we together? But there are other things that only Satan can do. John chapter 10 and verse 10. Jesus is speaking and he begins his discourse by saying, The thief cometh not. The thief cometh not. That means he has no business coming into your life, your business, your ministry, except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. You can verify whether it is Satan by looking for these three things. He comes to steal. That means before he comes into your life, he must verify whether there is something worth stealing, something worth killing, something worth destroying. He's attacking you is already a verification that you are great. You see that now. Because the Bible says he cometh not. That means he's not careless in attacking people. There are people he will not attack because they are not worth his effort. So the fact that he's disturbing you and your family is already a sign that there is prophecy roaming around the corridors of your destiny. The thief cometh not. Are we still together? But for to steal... No wonder from birth he's been at your case. No wonder all through school he has been at your case. He cometh not. There are things only Satan can do. Are we learning? Matthew chapter 13, please. Let's hurry up 24 to 28. Matthew 13, 24 to 28. Jesus is teaching now in his manner and he's using a parable. The Bible says, Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. Follow carefully. Next verse. But while men slept, again, he says, His enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. Next verse. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, there appeared tares also. What thou sow good seeds in the field? From whence had these tares? Listen to the answer of Jesus. Verifying again that there are certain things only Satan can do. He being Jesus said unto them, an enemy had done this. That means don't confuse it. 
that pain and that sickness roaming around your body. Jesus is saying you, it was not part of the seed you sowed. But you are seeing another seed that is not consistent with what you have been sowing. And he's telling you let there be no confusion. An enemy has done this. An enemy has done this. There are things when you see in the life of individuals. There are things when you see in the life of families. There are things when you see in the life of ministries. There are things if you see threatening glorious destinies. As a believer with spiritual intelligence, you know immediately that this is not the Lord's doing. That means it is another person's doing. That means God is not the only person who does. Satan too does. And that there are certain signatures that when you see, you know this one is the devil's doing. So there are things that men can do. Are we still together on that? There are things that only Satan can do. But hallelujah for the context of our discussion tonight. There are things that only God can do. Mm. There are certain things... There are certain results. There are certain manifestations that is higher than the frame of men. The moment you see a human vessel commanding that result, it immediately implicates him that you have come into partnership with a spirit. Our assignment is to verify which spirit, but for sure you are not alone in producing this result. For instance, if in one year God opens a door that takes 10 years, it immediately a door that should take 10 years is open for you in one year. That immediately tells you a spirit must have come to assist you for that possibility to happen. Are we together now? John chapter 3, please, from verse 1 and 2. John 3, 1 and 2. John chapter 3, from verse 1 and 2. There was a man, the Bible calls him a Pharisee called Nicodemus. A ruler of the Jews, verse 2. The Bible says the same man came to Jesus by night, having observed Jesus for a while, having observed the mighty miracles, having heard whether by rumor or he verified intelligently that this was the son of a young virgin. In other words, he was human. But Nicodemus began to follow from one crusade after another, one meeting after another. And he came to the conclusion that this man cannot be alone. There, there has to be a God factor in them. I may not know who that God is, but I know that certainly this man is not alone. And here's what he had to say, verse 2. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, meaning teacher, we know that thou art a teacher. Come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest. For no man can build this house within a short space of time. For no man can raise this kind of children. For no man can have this kind of influence. For no man can be given this kind of power except God be with him. Except God be with him. Nicodemus was an intelligent man, you must understand. And he's speaking from, from his conclusion about Jesus that we have observed you and the only, I can only trace your results to the fact that there has to be a partnership between you and God. You and a divine spirit. There are things only God can do. There are things only God can do. You're not a man, no. You're not a man, no. You're the God who opens doors no man can shut. You're not a man, no. You're not a man, no. You're the God of everything, no one. The meaning of all what I'm saying is that from tonight in the name of Jesus, stand in the name that is above all names, your life will become a Bible study manual that men will use your testimony. They will use your life to learn God in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, that at your appearance, men will marvel and wonder 
and find a cause to go back and study scripture because of the kinds of results that will emanate from your life. You believe that shouting loud, amen. amen. Please be seated. Let me give you four examples as captured in scripture of what God can do. Are you ready? Number one, very quickly, Deuteronomy chapter 26. Do you love scripture? 6 to 9. Media, please help us. Deuteronomy 26, 6 to 9. This was a very profound testimony. And the Egyptians evil and treated us and afflicted us and laid upon us hard bondage. The next verse, please. And when we cried unto the Lord God of our fathers, the Lord heard our voice and looked on our affliction and our labor and our oppression. Next verse. And the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt, help me, with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm and with great terribleness and with signs and wonders. This is one of the things only God can do. Number two, Daniel chapter 3 from verse 24 we're reading down to 30 very quickly. The Bible talks about three Hebrew boys called Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And on account of their faith, their conviction, and their refusal to bow to this 90 feet golden stature of Nebuchadnezzar that was built to mock the God of the, of, of the, of, um, the God who sits in the heavens. He created something to be God for himself. And he said at the sound of musical instruments you all bow. And the gentleman said listen we have been taught to be respectful and to be honoring. But in this matter we are not careful to answer you. In other words our allegiance will remain unwavering even in the midst of this. The Bible says Nebuchadnezzar was astonished. He rose up when they threw them into the fire. They made it seven times hotter. Are we together? such that those who threw them even died by the heat from the flames and these three young men jumped into the fire please follow very carefully Nebuchadnezzar was astonished he rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors did we not cast three men bound in the midst of the fire and they answered and said unto the king true O king next verse and he answered and said lo I see four men lose walking in the midst of the fire and they have no hurt and the form of the fourth is like the son of God next verse Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said unto Shadrach Meshach and Abednego ye servants of the most high it says come forth and they came forth hither in the, in the midst of the fire. The next verse. And the princes, the governors, the captains, the kings, the counselors being gathered together. I like this scripture. They saw this man upon whose bodies the fire had no power. Upon whose bodies. This is not what a man can do. Mm -mm. The fire had no power nor was an hair of their hair singed neither was their coat changed nor the smell of the fire had passed upon them next verse please watch this as a result of that the very next verse please Nebuchadnezzar spake and said blessed be the God he became a preacher at once no rehearsal, no Bible school. But he saw a manifestation of God in the life of three young men. And that man was forced to preach a sermon. Hmm. Blessed be the God of Shadrach. I don't know his name, but I know those who serve him. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Who had delivered his servants that trusted in him. And have changed the king's word. And yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any God except their own God. Last verse please. It says therefore as a result of this wonder. This encounter with the God who has done this one. I make a decree that every people, nation, language. Which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Shall be cut in pieces. And their houses shall be made a dunghill. Because there is none other God that can deliver. Listen after this sort. 
There are others that can try to deliver in a certain way, but God brands his impact in a way that only him can do it. Are we together? Can I give you one more? Matthew chapter 9, please, very quickly. We're examining what God alone can do. If it is true that it is the Lord's doing, then we need to know how the Lord's doing looks like. Because we know how man's doing looks like. We know how Satan's doing looks like. So I'm giving you a picture from scripture as to how the Lord's doing looks like. So that any doing in your life that does not look like what I'm describing, it becomes your assignment in prayer tonight. That means we are tracing who is behind the things happening in your life. If we see testimonies and a manifestation of the glory of God, congratulations, it truly is the Lord. But if we see pain and tears and sorrow, then we have come tonight by the Spirit to end an invisible hand that is masquerading as an angel of light. And yet the results that are showing is not the Lord's doing. Matthew chapter 9. From verse 1, please. He entered into a ship and passed over and came into his own city. And behold, they brought unto him a man sick of palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick, Son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. And behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemeth. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said unto them, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? He says, For whether it is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man had power on earth to forgive sins. Then he said unto the man who is sick of palsy, Arise, take up your bed, and go to thine house. And the Bible says, He arose and departed to his house. Only God can do this one. Only God can do this one. If you care to add one more for the sake of reference, go to John chapter 5. The Bible tells us that there was a man who was at a pool called Bethesda. And I'm sure the first year they moved that man, he knew that no matter what, after two, three years, I should be out of here. But two years became ten years. Can I tell you, time does not on its own change anything. It is time plus an encounter with the God of the Bible that produces results. Waiting for things to change just with the passage of time will only leave you in disappointment. I'm sure when that guy was 10 years there at the pool, he said, let me give five more years at the most. But that man's life was moving from worse, bad to worse, bad to worse, until he got to the 38th year. It's one of the longest known period we know in scripture recorded where a man was afflicted. Even Abraham did not stay 38 years. Even Job, the exact time was not given. But we know the Bible does not record that he stayed that long. Every long-standing issue that has mocked God in someone's life, in the name that is above all names, I stand in partnership with the grace that is upon this house. And I declare this night, may this be your night of deliverance. May this be your night of encounter in the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Jesus looks at that man and knowing that he had been there a long time, quoting for sake of time, he looks at him and says, would you want that I lift you? And the man paraphrasing, he said, would thou be made whole? And the man said, I have no man. He thought that it was just men that make it happen. I have no man. I have seen men help men. But this is my situation. I don't know if God can help, but I have no man. And Jesus looks at him. He says that when I'm about to step there, another person steps before me. And Jesus looks at him and says, rise up. You have seen what men can do. They have to wait for one year until the water is stirred. But when God comes, whether it's the season or not, his appearance makes it the season. Did you hear what I said? They had to wait for one man. 
That means if, if we are to walk by what scripture gave us, there were only 38 people from the time of this man's affliction who had been healed out of the many people who were sick. But Jesus came and said, no, I don't wait for seasons. My, when I show up, it is your season. It is the Lord's doing. Hmm. Is someone getting blessed already? Yes, now, very quickly, as we prepare to tie up our teaching for tonight, I want to give you four scriptural tests. You will always know it is the Lord's doing when the following occur. Are you ready? Number one, it is always the Lord's doing if and when the results are according to the word of God and consistent with the will of God. Please write it down. You will always know it is the Lord's doing when the results are according to the word of God and consistent with the will of God. Genesis chapter 21 and verse 1 is a very instructive scripture. God does not just do what we want. God does not just do what we cry for. In the economy of God, he only does what he says. Can we read together if you can see it projected? Ready? One to read. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. One more time. And the Lord visited Sarah. Verse 1. As he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah. That means the only way to get God to do is to get him to say if he has not said it, even though he has the power to do it, he is bound by his word. Are we together? If it is the Lord's doing, it will have to start by the Lord's saying. The Lord's doing only follows the Lord's saying. If you are not ready to obey and to understand the Lord's saying, you will never see the Lord's doing. If it is the Lord's doing... It must be consistent with the will of God and it must be according to the word of God. Luke 5, 5. The Bible tells us in the book of Luke chapter 5 and verse 5 that Simon now answering him said, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. He says, nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. All I need you to do is to speak. Because action follows your word. Every time you speak, the first thing God did in Genesis chapter 1 is that, and God said, let there be light. And the Bible says, and there was light. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. So if it is the Lord's doing, let me recap one last time. It must be according or in accordance to the word of God. And it must be consistent with the will of God. That means for you to know the Lord's doing, you must know what God has said. The responsibility is now upon you to study the speakings of God as captured in scripture. When you know what God has said, you also know what he can do. Let me remind you of a few things that God has said concerning you as captured in scripture. That when men say there is a casting down, is that in your Bible? That for you, you will say there is a lifting up. If God has said that by his spirit, it means it is within his power to make it happen. Can I tell you another thing God has said? He says, and I will restore unto you. So stop crying about what you lost. God has already spoken that restoration is a possibility in his dealing with men. You lost money, you lost friends, you lost strategic relationships. God is able to restore both things and time. No man can restore time. Only God who does not dwell in the realm of time can restore time. Hallelujah. It is your responsibility to study the things that God has said. What has God said concerning you? Everything he said to Abraham, he said to you too. 
Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, the Bible says, to do and to observe all that I command you this day, that you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth, and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you. And he begins to list them. Galatians 3 and verse 29 says, And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. That means everything he said to Abraham in Christ, he has said to you. Hallelujah. That means you are called to a life of influence and grace and glory. He says you will be exalted above all the nations of the earth, regardless the village where you were born. You see, if you can believe what God has said, then he will make what he has said come to pass in your life. You want to test the Lord's doing? It must be according to his word and it must be consistent with his will. One time a man was sick and he, he, his son was sick and he came to Jesus and he said, if you are willing, I know you are able to heal my son. And Jesus said, I am willing. That means this is consistent with my will. So watch a miracle happen because it is consistent with my will. Number two, very quickly. When it is the Lord's doing, what is the second test? The Lord's doing will always require faith on the part of the believer for its manifestation. Please write it down in your heart and on your notebook that the word, the Lord's doing will always require faith on the part of the believer. Faith in one word is obedience. Please write it down. No matter what you do that you call faith, if it does not culminate into obedience, you are not walking by faith. Faith is not just saying what God has said. Faith is walking in keeping with the conditions that commit God to perform. Are we together now? Hebrews chapter 11, please, 1 and 2. The Bible says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. He calls it the evidence of things not seen. I like verse 2. It says, for by it, the elders obtained. So men obtain in this kingdom by faith. The elders obtained a good report. And if you care to read verse 3, it says, through faith we understand. We were not there, but through faith, 11 and verse 3, we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God. Through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God. If the word of God framed the world, it can frame anything in your life. John chapter 1 and verse 3 says, Without him was not anything made that was made. Outside of his influence was not anything made that was made. So if it is the Lord's doing, ladies and gentlemen, please understand that it must require faith. What is faith? Faith is the name given to the action of obedience that you take in response. Listen, faith is the name given to the action of obedience that you take as proof that you believe God and so to commit him to perform. When God speaks and you find out the conditions that are connected to the manifestation of that promise, walking in keeping with those conditions is called faith. Faith is beyond just confessing what God has said. It is part of the process of faith. But there has to be the action of obedience that commits God. Are we together? It must require faith. The Bible mandates that we only follow those who through faith and patience. There are many routes to obtaining the promises. But that in following men verify that there is faith at work in their lives otherwise you are taking a risk to follow men who through faith and patience can i tell you when you are walking with god there must be something captured within your walk with god that will demand that you trust him hmm. number three when it is the lord's doing what is the third litmus test it must bless and bring glory to the believer now or eventually. Please write. It must bless and bring good to the believer. It must bless and bring good to the believer. Now, that means at the present or eventually. 
if it is the Lord's doing, when it is the Lord's doing, it must bless and bring good to the believer now or eventually. How do I know that this is the Lord's doing? It must bless and bring good to the believer. Even if it does not happen in that instant. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. They are thoughts of peace and not of evil. One more time. They are thoughts of peace and not of evil. It says to bring you to an expected end. Matthew chapter 7 from verse 11 and 12 for sake of time. The, the whole context starts from verse 7 but then we'll just read 11 and 12. It says, if ye then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children. How much more shall your father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him. Is that in your Bible? Verse 12. It says, therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you you will also do unto them and so on and so forth so he's saying that if you as as men unregenerate with with the nature of evil you still have a sense of compassion to do good to your children how much more your heavenly father if it is the lord's doing even if it does not make sense now relax within that experience is your blessing and within that experience is good are we together Romans chapter 8 and verse 28 still on the third point very quickly Romans 8 and verse 28 and we know hallelujah they may not know but we know this is an advantage we have in the kingdom we know that how many things including what made you cry yesterday that within the economy of God he sustains the power to make all things work together now I don't know how many of you cook well but I know that this region cooks well am I right on that come on don't disappoint this I, 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 I should have a plate of swallow for this compliment hallelujah but watch this Anybody who cooks well knows that the ingredients that make the meal you enjoy have different tastes. Is that true? Yes. There are ingredients that you only enjoy them when combined. If you are to eat or taste them alone, it will annoy you. It is so pungent. And yet it is part of what makes that meal beautiful. Now it is the expertise of the cook. You leave it to the cook. He knows the quantity of combination. Are we together now? Yes. If, if you are cooking a pot of soup and the same quantity of vegetables become the same quantity of salt for you, you have done something only Satan can do. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't keep down, fly you won't see down. So number one, that when it is the Lord's doing, it must be in accordance to the word of God and it must be consistent with the will of God. Number two, when it is the Lord's doing, it will require faith, it will require obedience on the part of the believer. You have that down? Number three, that when it is the Lord's doing, it must bless and bring good to the believer. Take note, now or eventually. That means if you have not seen the good manifest now, Mary, 
When the angel appeared, he never said you are a troubled woman. He said you are favored. But the next thing that followed Mary was a series of controversies and pain. And yet God still said you are favored. So sometimes favor does not start with laughter. Favor can start with endurance, but it is still favor. Favor can start with tears, but it is still favor. Favor can start with the most important thing. The Bible says better is the end. The end. Don't be too quick to say God is unfaithful. No. Only a boring movie starts with victory. Every movie that attracts your attention will demand that you keep watching. Hallelujah. Many great movies start with mysticism and tragedies. The entire span of the movie is to unravel secrets and mysteries. That is where the expectation and the joy of watching that movie is. Could that movie be your life? That for 30 years now, even you, you don't understand what God is acting. But rest in the fact that if it is the Lord's doing, at the end of it, you will sing a song that only you can sing. I hope you believe what you are hearing. Let me prophesy to someone. The same way you cry is with that same energy you will laugh. The same way they mocked you, that is the same way they will gather to celebrate God. Hallelujah. Let me show you what will happen to someone in this place. Job chapter 42 and verse 10. Please give it to us. The Bible says, And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. And the Lord gave Job, how many? What he had before. Don't regret what you lost before. A greater is coming. Uh, listen. I know you lost a child sadly. But God will give you one child that is equal to a nation. Now. Let's go to verse 11 of that scripture. So that I tie this up tonight. Verse 11, Job 42. Watch what happened to him. The Bible says, Then came there unto him all his brethren. Where were they when he was alone with his wife? What grace suddenly came upon him that made everybody who forgot him to start remembering him? Does that look like what will happen to you? After this conference, after this convention, that those who have called you Ichabod, they forgot about you? They, they've drifted from you because of the pungency of all that has happened in your life that they will begin to come to you let's finish that scripture let's finish that scripture the bible says all his brethren and all his sisters read with me if you can and all that had been of his acquaintances before and they did eat bread with him in the house and they bemoaned him and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. I like the second part. It says, and every man gave him a piece of money. And every one an earring of gold. How many of them? Including those who laughed before. Every man. When the Lord's hand comes upon your life. He can use anybody. Even Pharaoh to bless you. hallelujah please be seated for the last point so we wrap up my god someone will not go back home the same are you ready for number four the fourth test how will i know that it is the lord's doing it must bring glory to the name of the lord in it the entire journey culminated by that result Jesus must be glorified. Matthew 9 and verse 8. Matthew 9 and verse 8. The fourth litmus test that helps you know that this is the Lord's doing. The Bible says, but when the multitude saw it, help me, they marveled and glorified God which had given such power unto men. 
when they saw the child that had come after 20 years, when they saw the job that had come after 10 years, when they saw the promotion, when they saw the good things that came, that after 10 years of waiting, God gave you quadruplets. The Bible says when they saw, you see, the way you know it is God is that the more men look at you, the more they call his name. When your name is the only name they call in the presence of your testimony, someone else produced it. If it is God's hand that is at work in your life, the more men look at you, they should nod and say, this God, this God, not just your name, this God. Hallelujah. It must bring glory to the name of the Lord. Galatians 1.24 is a scripture that has blessed me for many years. Let's read it together and please never forget it for the rest of your life because this is what your life is becoming after now. It says, one to read, and they glorified God in me. One more time. One more time. The last time now. And they glorified God. Hallelujah. These are the four scriptural tests to know that it is the Lord's doing. Can I recap one last time and then we'll pray? When it is the Lord's doing, the results that the manifestations in your life must be in accordance to the word of God and must be consistent with the will of God. Number two, it must require faith on the part of the believer for that result to be made manifest. Number three, it must bless and bring good to the believer now or eventually. Do not forget point three. So that you can still rejoice in the midst of storms. It did not happen today, but it did not mean it will not happen. God is still walking. Give him time. Hallelujah. And then number four, when all is said and done, when the children come, when the prosperity comes, when the ministry increase comes, when the influence comes, never forget. It says, let it not be that when you have built houses and you have done this, that you say, my power and the might of my hand has given me this, but thou shalt remember. Meaning in the presence of plenty, men can forget. In the presence of results, men can forget. Pain can make you remember God, but plenty can erode the memory of his faithfulness from your life. The Bible is full of men and women who forgot God. And in their pride, exalted and puffed up with pride, they forgot God until they came down to their lowly estates again. Never forget the fourth and the final test. If it is the Lord's doing, it must bring glory to the name of the Lord. If it is the Lord's doing, it must bring glory to the name of the Lord. John 17 and verse 1, Jesus lifted up his eyes to the heaven praying and he said father the hour has come glorify thy son that thy son may glorify thee glorify thy son glorify the businessman that he may bring you glory glorify the young lady that she may bring you glory glorify Esther that she may bring you glory glorify Ruth that she may bring you glory glorify Gideon that he may bring you glory glorify Samson glorify Joshua Selman I will not call your name for you glorify Joshua Selman that he may bring you glory. Glorify that preacher, that apostle. Glorify this faithful church member. Glorify this usher, that he may bring you glory. Can I tell you this? Please listen to me. One of the reasons why many people do not see the manifestation of the hand of God upon their lives is because they are not determined to give him glory in the midst of their lifting. It is easy to want to stand and be the epicenter, the point of attraction. But you see, the strategy of the kingdom is that you attract God's hand and God's might. You want your life to be a marvel and a wonder first to you and then to the nations. You must be doggedly committed to see that intentionally 
he is glorified in the midst of any and everything that may mean clapping that may mean jumping that may mean rolling that may mean calling men to come and say see what god has done whatever it takes make sure that men are not confused as to who is the doer i remind you one last time dear people of god there are things men can do there are things only satan can do but in your life and in this season and as touching this convention in the name of jesus many of you have seen what men can do you don't need a repetition of that many of you have experienced painfully so what satan can do you don't need a repetition of that but in the name of jesus someone is about to taste and see that the lord is good someone is about to taste and see that the lord is good taste and see that the lord is good in one minute wherever you are open your mouth and begin to cry unto god visit my life oh god and do what only you can do are there people of prayer in this church go ahead and pray visit my family call the name of your children mention the name of your business mention the name of your ministry as a man of god i cry to you the exalted one do what only you can do i have seen what men can do i have seen what satan can do but i want to say this is the lord's doing make it marvelous in my eyes make it marvelous in my sight Pray. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Is someone praying? Sheba kata parakato safraskes, kelantes kapakato safraskadesh. Father, let your hand come upon my ministry. Someone is praying. Father, let your hand come upon my business. Let your hand come upon my endeavors. Let this yoke of delay, let this yoke of pain, let this affliction of darkness this mockery and shame that statement Ichabod, let it be taken rolled away from my life one more minute you are praying one more minute you are praying there is a preacher listening to me it's time for men to see the hand of god upon your life and your ministry it's time to contend that your calling and your election become sure. Esther, don't be quiet. It's time for God to take you to your palace. Ruth, don't be quiet. It's time for Boaz to see you. Gideon, do not be quiet. It's time for the mantle of a warrior to rest upon you. Joseph, don't be quiet. It's time for the gates of the prison to be opened. For in Jesus' much less name we have prayed. For in Jesus' much less name we have prayed. Do you believe in the power of prophetic declarations? The power of God is resting now in this place. I want to speak over your life. Just give me the next one minute. That everything that does not name the name of Christ... Pela shali karus kaberiata, embra talaka para sabere sopras katia, kradebelegeba sabarika perusiata, 
every door that has been closed over you in the name of Jesus the son of the living God please hear me I command that door to be opened now 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 hallelujah listen there are three ways to open doors number one is by using the right key number two is by knocking but that would depend on whether the person inside wants to open for you but the way to open doors when you are angry is to learn from Paul and Silas it says at midnight they prayed and they sang and all the jailers heard them suddenly there was an earthquake it rattled the foundations and the Bible says and all doors open how many doors all doors open let me speak to someone because some doors have opened but others have refused to open every door that is left yet to be opened no matter how long it has been closed I decree and declare a fata be open a fata be open a fata be open a fata be open We're wrapping up. Hmm. Once upon a time, the nation of Israel were standing before the Red Sea. And behind them were the Egyptians at the command of Pharaoh with anger coming to take them back into yesterday. And the Bible says the Lord told Moses, why do you cry before me? It says, speak to the people that they go forward. I want to speak to someone. You don't just go forward because you want to. You are pushed by prophecy. I stand as a prophetic midwife upon the grace in this house. And for someone who has been crawling, I push you into the next level of your life. I push a pariketesketa, rekete prekete katosiata. I push you, step into the next level of ministry, the next level of your destiny, by God who helps men, in the name of Jesus Christ. Egyptians you see today in the name of Jesus the rider upon the white horse the one by whom a sword comes from his mouth every Egyptian that has mocked God please hear me in the name that is above all names you see them no more forever you see them no more forever you see them you see them no more forever. Finally, can I declare restoration? Please watch this. My apologies for stretching by a few minutes beyond my allotted time. I want you to listen carefully. Just help those under the anointing. But listen to me. You know what it means to restore? There is a difference between progress and restoration watch me this is progress taking incremental steps right restoration is when an obstacle inhibits your progress so that there is a lag in time the things you should have done you cannot do because of that obstacle now watch this if the obstacle is taken away it is called deliverance but what happens afterwards is not restoration it is still called progress Restoration means to be taken by the hand of the Spirit to the point you would have been if that obstacle were not there. Are we together now? I'm not speaking progress tonight. I want to speak restoration because there are people who, if not because 
this family altar tied you down by now there are things that would have happened to you if not because of the wickedness and the biases of men you would have been lifted in that office by now the Bible says they are taken for a prey and none say it restore I decree and declare between now and the end of August by the God who has called me between a pareke tebata now and the end of August everything that should have been in your life that is not in your life I gravitate it towards your destiny every relationship that should not have left your life but has gone I call it back in Jesus name I call back opportunities by the Spirit of the Living God and hear me even if you are Samson I command that hair to grow back listen for someone before you arrive home this night your testimony will reach your house before you did you hear what I said your testimony will reach your house before you wave your hands to Jesus as a sign of thanksgiving and as a sign of faith you are also waving trouble goodbye you are saying goodbye once and for all and it must wave you back you are waving shame and reproach goodbye by the lifting up of your hands to the God who lifts men to the God who helps men indeed this is the Lord's doing hallelujah hallelujah now please lend me your attention for one more minute no moving around please you are in this place I want to give two sets of people an opportunity to make it right with Jesus tonight it is impossible that you have a gathering like this without men and women who are being convicted of the spirit to make it right with Jesus if it is the Lord's doing remember I said it must be according to his word and it must be consistent with his will and the Bible says it is the desire of the Lord that all men be saved and that they come into the knowledge of the truth. There must be someone in this place on ground here and those following by way of internet, television, or perhaps by way of a rebroadcast. The Lord is calling you to make it right here at this um, convention. I want to give you an opportunity to make it right with Jesus. Or number two, there are those who are saying, Apostle, if you will give me a chance, I remember making this decision, but sincerely, I cannot say that my life, I'm walking consistent with the ways of God. I have deviated for whatever reason, like the prodigal son. You see, coming to yourself is your responsibility. The prodigal son went away, spent his money on riotous living, but when he came to himself, the Bible says, he said, how many hired servants as my father and I'm here feeding with the swine? He said, I will arise and I will go to my father and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against you and against heaven. I am not worthy to be called your son, but take me as one of your slaves. Watch this. The father never came and met him in his rot and he did not have to go home to meet his father. They met somewhere at the point of his obedience. Hallelujah. He got up and the moment he started taking a step towards his father, his father been coming to church you were born by and from a christian family you've been around the things of god that does not equal salvation proximity to the things of god does not equal salvation the bible says there is no other name under heaven given unto men by which we must be saved he said this is the record that god hath given us eternal life and that that life is in his son it is only he that hath the son that had life not he that had church not he that had a pastor as important as that is I want to count one to five and I want someone who is bold and sincere serious and determined to end it once and for all with Satan you are saying apostle if you give me a chance I want to make it right and I'm not ashamed as I count one to five from the fathers of the aisles I want you to make your way and come and stand right in front of me here and I want to pray with you. I'll begin my counting now. Don't wait for someone to be the first. 
Be bold, be strong. One. Let's celebrate them as they come. Two. If you're running, run to Jesus. Run to him. Three. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending. Please stand for space. You don't have to kneel. Stand. Come. Come to Jesus. Thank you very much, my dear brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for this bold decision. The Bible declares that as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. It is a noble decision, the wisest decision known to man in this side of God's kingdom to make your ways right, to have peace with God and to receive peace from him. Whether you are dedicating your heart, your life to Jesus or making it a sign of surrender, and please say this after me. Say it loud and clear. You are speaking to Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus. Tonight, I have heard your word. I love you with all my heart. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive Jesus into my heart as my savior as my lord and as my king i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight i am a child of god i go forward ever and backward never Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for these precious ones. By the authority of scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God. The grace to live the victorious Christian life, I release upon you right now. And based on the authority of scripture and your declaration, the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over your life. You walk in newness of life from now. In Jesus' matchless name I pray. Now, please, all of you just remain where you are. I see that there are a number of um, counselors and officials who will be handing over a card. Please do well to have the card. Make sure you pick it and then fill it legibly as demanded um, with your correct details. And from there, you'll be guided on what to do, whether to go back to your seat or to move somewhere where you'll be counseled further. But thank you very much for making this great decision. Hallelujah. Now, let me just lend my voice respectfully to encourage everyone um, to be part of tomorrow's session. I'm going to be speaking over your life, and then I'm going to be praying for the sick in the morning. Hallelujah. So make sure that you make whatever sacrifice as much as you can make and invite everyone, if there is no space, if they have to sit on the roof, it's better to sit on the roof and be healed and be blessed. Hallelujah. So you have the responsibility to do the work of an evangelist. Let everybody know that God is moving here in this assembly, in this church. For now, may the Lord bless you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen.